Good evening, friends, and welcome to this Wednesday evening reflection again. After some three weeks of a COVID-related hiatus, it's good to be back with you and to pick up with Abby on this very important subject, a series that we've entitled Matters of the Mind. We made some progress before we had to go into a bit of a break, and tonight we consider the, the condition of bipolar, um, which is a, a mood disorder. That's right. And I, I cleared this with Abby beforehand. I want to begin by reading a text that, that for me has always been a little bipolar in nature. And it's a text from Lamentations chapter 3. Words found in a, in a familiar song that I think we all sang at, at Sunday school, uh, where we hear these words from verses 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The interesting thing about this text, though, is the, the verses that precede this proclamation of God's steadfast love. And I'm only going to read a few of them. We'll begin with verse 16. He, being the Lord, has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, my endurance has perished. My hope from the Lord has also. Remember my affliction and my wanderings, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continually remembers it and is bowed down within me. Here we see the prophet Jeremiah moving to this extraordinary high, beautiful, lyrical words of the Lord's mercies being new every morning. Words that, that shape some of the songs that we sing as the Christian community today. And yet immediately before this, there's this desperate, desperate low mm. and recounting how in his view, even the Lord has made wormwood and gall his food and his drink. And, and so am I correct in, in seeing something of a bipolar nature mm. in this text, this, this desperate low to this extraordinary high? Is, is that what we're dealing with when mm. we talk about bipolar? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, so bipolar's original name was manic depression and okay. um, still is known Mm -hmm. And for that, uh, manic being the mania and depression being your severe depressive symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and, and so often um, people get it wrong because they think it's sort of a, a swing in mood. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. It's um, certainly it's going from extremes and being there and experiencing those. And not mm -hmm. interchangeably all the time, okay. but it's definitely um, experiencing either the mania and then the depression. Okay. So it's periods of either or within the same diagnosis. Sure. And is it always extreme? Do you go, for example, from the this this manic high to a to a manic low or a manic low to a manic high? Can you can you go sort of halfway in between? Mm. Um, that's very interesting. Yes. So there's two diagnoses. One is bipolar one. And then you've got bipolar two. Okay. Um, none uh, out of which are not, there's no one that is worse than the other. Mm -hmm. They just present a little differently. Bipolar one has your um, manic um, stages mm -hmm. and can be accompanied and often is by depression, severe mm -hmm. depression. Um, but bipolar two doesn't always have the extreme mania. Okay. Sometimes bipolar two will have the hypomania, which is slightly sort of less than the, than the, the um, hypomania stage with with very um sort of severe depression okay. so bipolar 2 in summary will have the severe depression not necessarily the mania mm. and bipolar 1 has the mania and often the depression sure. so they present differently are they are they treated differently um well how long is a piece of strip okay. so so it depends your your treatment would always be medication Mm. Um, adherence to medication and it is a bit of trial and error because mm. one treats extreme mania and you've got to be careful not to offset the depression mm. and vice versa um, you would also need to take into consideration if there were any comorbidities okay. so any other mental health um, issues or disorders and a psychiatrist would very um, sort of aptly be able to sort of mm. get that right but again it's not one pill fits all it would be um, it would be a combination of medication, mm -hmm. um, monitoring, mm -hmm. um, and also um, some psychotherapy as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's interesting that you say that in terms of how how 
nuanced and, and subtle the approach to treatment has to be, mm. uh, because it, it sort of highlights the idea that, that bipolar is, is quite a complex mood disorder. And, and often people yes. throw it around as a label. You know, it, someone experiences mood swings or mm. a change in mood, and then suddenly they say, well, they must be bipolar. Yeah. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. It's the kind of thing that has to be diagnosed Absolutely, yes, and that's another thing. Um, it, it's also one of those that have got the bad stigma, where mm, it absolutely yeah. isn't. It's a disorder, um, and 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 yet the, the scary thing is, is that it's very prevalent. It mm. affects one percent of our population. So call it five hundred thousand people oh, are affected by it, yeah. and that's what we know of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That excludes the people that Correct. haven't sought help yeah. and haven't been diagnosed. Mm. Sure, okay. Uh, it'd be a question that often comes up when it when we talk about mental disorders or mood disorders like this is, is it hereditary? Is it something that I can inherit? In, in this case in particular, is it? And, and how, do we, how, how do we navigate that question? So, so there's, three, there's three sort of big sort of risk factors, if I could call it that. Bipolar does have a very strong um, hereditary contingent on it, okay. about 50%, so okay. in, in a direct bloodline. Sure. So you see a lot more bipolar in bipolar families, okay. um, whereas a lot of other mental health disorders are not mm. um, hereditary or, or sort of um, biologically sort of um, inherited. Um, substance abuse right. um, is, a, is, a, is a risk factor, as well as life stress. So life stress, um, big changes, great trauma oh, can okay. trigger. All right. Um, but it, it's generally diagnosed of late teens, early twenties, oh, okay. and thereabouts. Sure. Yeah. That was going to be my next question: Is this if, if we if we say that there's a strong aspect or dimension of, of uh, inheritance, mm. so to speak, of this of, of bipolar? How early can it be diagnosed, and when is it normally picked up? You see, like with most things, you, you've got to be careful because. By virtue of being a teenager, <laughs> let's talk about moods. <laughs> They're the easiest people in the world. Teenagers so, are a dream. So, so, <laughs> you see, it's it, you've got to, you know, you've really got to separate that, mm. uh, or you've got to really needle in a haystack because mm. there's a lot of age-appropriate behaviour mm. in adolescence that is not anywhere else in life yeah. that you can't attribute to a disorder. And mm. um, there's also the formation. I mean, not to get too deep, but your personality is not is not sort of readily formed until the age of 25. Sure. So there's a lot of factors involved in a diagnosis where you don't want to be, you don't want to prematurely mm. um, give that diagnosis because it's a lifelong diagnosis, mm. right? Mm. Sure. So you need to know what you're dealing with. Yeah. So that's that's a good point, that, that bipolar is a lifelong condition, mm -hmm. but it but it can be treated and it can be managed. Absolutely. Mm. So, so yes, it is a lifelong um, it, it, it can't be cured, mm. um, it's certainly managed, and okay. people are able to have wonderful relationships, mm. um, marriages, kids, jobs, mm. you name it, mm. Um, mm. as long as it's managed. Yeah. Um, and that's why I speak about support being very, very um, important, because I know a lot of support groups deal specifically with people that have um, been people with bipolar attend, mm. because you can share, mm. Mm. and you, you know that you're not the only one, so yeah. then you sort of dilute that stigma a bit. Yeah, yeah. And that is, it's, it's such a crucial part, I believe, of, of mm. treating any kind of mental or, or mood disorder um, is, is recognizing that, that we're not alone. Mm. We're, we're not on our own. Uh, and that counts for both those who suffer from these conditions and their families, yeah. their, their support structure, yeah. to realize that we're not in this on, on our own. And I really hope that that as we continue through this journey, having picked up now again after a few weeks, that that's part of the takeaway, mm. that, that you're not alone. And, and, and we don't have to be quiet about it. We don't have to, we don't have to feel the stigma by pretending that it, that it doesn't mm. exist or that we're on our own, but that we can be in this together and we can be of support to one another. So we really want to implore you. If, if you are anxious that you might have a... Uh, mood disorder like bipolar, reach out to professionals like Abby. Uh, if, if you feel more comfortable reaching out to the church, then, then do that and we'll put you in touch with the right people. Mm. But please know that, that we are not alone in, in any of these kinds of struggles. Abby, it's becoming a bit of a, a bit of a tradition for us in this series, but a final thought from your side. I think you should say that. I was actually just thinking, I had a, a thought as you were chatting on the last sort of phase, but it's it's not it's not too big to manage, mm. you know. Um, yeah. 
we are governed by fear. So, mm. so it's too big. I can't do it. Mm. I won't be able to. Absolutely, you can. Yeah. It's it's never too big with with more hands, with mm. more support, mm. with more people. Mm. You know, assisting the journey. Absolutely yeah. beautiful, Abby. Thanks for your time sure. again tonight. Really appreciate it. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and remain with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Second someone mentioned you were all alone I could feel the trouble coursing through your veins And now I know It's got a hold Just a phone call left an answer Had me sparking up These cigarettes won't stop me Wondering where you are Don't let go Keep a hold There's a house upon a hill Guiding like a lighthouse To a place where you'll be safe To feel the grace Cause we will make mistakes And if you've lost your way I'll leave the light on I'll leave the light on I'll been happening what's been on your mind lately you've been searching for a darker place to hide that's all right but if you carry on abusing you'll be robbed from us i refuse to lose another friend to drugs just come home don't let go There's a house upon the hill Guiding like a lighthouse To a place where you'll be safe To feel the grace Cause we've all made mistakes If you've lost your way I will leave the light